Hey, good morning. Good day. How are you? I think. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to figure out. sis good morning good morning good morning everybody good morning my apologies for the late start y'all hold on let me get my life together over here <clears throat> my apologies for the late start i uh left my work keys at home so i couldn't get in the classroom listen but today's a great day yes it is today's a great day so good morning, everybody. Let's dive in and let's make it do what it do. Father God, we thank you for this amazing day that you have made. You're so good. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. You're a wonderful God. You are a good father. And we love on you today. We just bless you and we honor you. We give you praise today. We magnify your name and we make your name great. Lord God, I pray on today, Father God, that as you speak to us, I pray that you will speak to our heart, that the conversation that we have today will be a conversation that lifts us up, that 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 is revelatory, that is um, that it may even be convicting, but it is a word that will change, that a word that would transform our lives father i pray to heavenly father that you would you would speak to us clearly so that we will know that it is you that is speaking i pray that it would be none of me but all of you father god i pray that you would minister to me minister through me minister father god the word that you would have us to hear this morning we need you we need you we can't do anything without you we need you daddy Speak, Holy Spirit, for we are listening. I, 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 I remove myself. I, I, I sit down so that you can stand up big in me. Hide me behind your cross that I may speak only what you say. Hide me behind your cross, Father, so that they, not, they don't see me, but they see you and you only. I pray for my morning manna family, Father, that you would bless every listener, every person that views this video. Bless them indeed. Bless them indeed. Bless them right where they are and right what they're going through. Bless them. I pray that we will always be reminded that even when we can't trace you, that you're with us, that we can trust your word because your word is eternal. Your word would never, ever change. And so for this, we are grateful. I pray that this word will go forth today, that it will not be hindered by any distractions, that it will not be hindered by wrong thinking, um, that it will not be hindered by bad teaching, but that you will reveal your truth to us on today. We're listening. We're ready. We're listening and we're ready. We glorify you because you are good. You're so good. You're so good. We love you today. Bless us. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I pray that there will be no backlash, there will be no retaliation of the word that is spoken, but it will go forth and it will fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Fam! Hey, y'all. Good morning. Grand rising. Happy Wednesday, whenever you may be watching this video. Hey to my YouTube uh, subscribers. I love you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and for tuning in today. Listen, I am excited. I am excited. I was talking to my bestie. I was talking to Lillian on the way to work this morning. <clears throat> and... As I, I told her, I said, I got to get off the phone with you because I got to I gotta hear. <laughs> we chit-chatting, and I need to hear what he's want me to say. And when I hung up the phone, this is what I heard in my spirit. Comparison is the thief of joy. I'll say it again. Comparison is a thief of joy. Thank you. It will steal your joy. Comparison will steal your peace. 
comparison, listen, comparison will keep you from walking in all that God has called you to walk in. Comparison. Somebody say comparison. Comparison. Comparison is when we look at something or someone that is in the possession of another. When we look at someone or something that's in the possession of another, if we're not careful, we can then begin to have ill feelings about it or, Irma, not only ill feelings, but we can sometimes think that, oh, I, I'll never have, I'll never have that. Comparison can, can keep you on different sides of the fence. It, it, it'll keep you from being mature. It'll keep you from growing. It'll keep you, again, from, from, from receiving all that God has for you. Let me tell you how I know. Firsthand, I have found myself looking at other people. I did it yesterday. A friend of mine texted me and she said, hey, on YouTube, the morning man of video from on YouTube is only five minutes. She said, but I went to the YouTube to your Facebook channel and I saw that it was like almost an hour, however long it was. She said, um, can you fix it? So I went back and I looked at it and I said, I don't understand. What happened was it didn't download properly. So it was, I was listening to it as I was waiting for it to download. And this is what I was saying. <clears throat> oh my goodness, why do I do that? I've got to talk calm. I, I want to talk calm. I want, I, I want to present myself like this. And then I started looking at how I was like, oh, I, baby. I was like, no, you need to calm down. Don't be so, you, you're too strong. It's like, what, this is what I was saying. You're so preachy. Just talk. Why don't don't why do you talk like that when you talk like that? I was literally beating myself up. I didn't see the good in me. I immediately saw negative. I immediately began to pick out the things in me that were not to my liking. Right? I immediately began to pick out things and I began to nitpick about myself. I even would say, oh my goodness, your face, you're this, you this, you this. Oh, Irma, thank you. I was just all over the place. It wasn't five minutes after I got off of looking at myself and beating myself up that our school nurse called. And she said, hey, beautiful. And I said, hey. We just got this like little thing going. And I was like, hey, pretty girl. Hey, hey. And she was like, I just wanted to call and tell you something. And I was like, what is it? <laughs> and she's always encouraging me in my lane. When I, when I do this, when I speak, she's always encouraging me. And she said, I wanted to tell you what a beautiful voice you have. And so my, my boss's birthday was on Monday. And so she happened to watch the news on Tuesday. And she said, I just finished watching the news. Your voice is so beautiful. She said, I love to hear you sing. I love to hear you speak. Now, five minutes ago, I was beating myself up about the, the gifts mm, that God has given me. The things that... What's it? What's what's in my circle that God has blessed me with? Right, I was beating myself up, and it wasn't five minutes. God said, "Let me shut that down. Let me shut that down. Let me let me send her a hug. Let me love on her through somebody else and show her that mm -mm, mm -mm, you you're fine just the way you are." I told her, I said, "Dawn, you will not believe." You would not believe what just happened to me. And I told her the whole thing. She was like, what? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, you better not change yourself. I love you. We love you just the way you are. Let me say this to you. You are not going to. It's so many sides of this comparison thing. This is the first side. 
You've got to be totally in love with you. Y'all excuse me, my allergy. You got to be you. Like, this is the thing, uh, this is one of the things that I tend to struggle with. Uh, is the way that I come across. The way that I present myself. Um, I have <clears throat> even found myself where in certain situations I will be quiet. Depending on who I'm around. Because my big personality when it comes out and I begin to be me. Sometimes I feel like everybody can't handle me. Am I making sense? I feel like, oh my goodness, I don't want to get too turned up because I can turn up. I don't want to get too turned up because then, you know, they may not accept me. Or And I, this is the thing. I know we say this because I say it. I don't care what nobody think about me. I'm going to be me. That's, that's not true. We do care. And I want us to stop saying that. I want us to stop saying, I don't care what no, you should care. You should care. You know why you should care? Because you are a representative on the earth. I think we say certain things because what we're trying to do is we're trying to protect ourselves. And let me just say this. I'm not, and I, and I appreciate every single one of you. I'm not saying it to you guys because I got a problem with me. I'm good. I have moments, but I'm good. I'm saying this to you because I believe that if, if, if I'm going through it, somebody else may be going through it to some degree or another, right? Sometimes we can compare what God has given us. We compare our body. Oh my goodness, I want a bigger butt. I want bigger breasts. I want lighter skin. I want straighter hair. I want curlier hair. I want, you know, my nose is this. My lips is this. I wish I, we go to looking at our body and, and we're not, we're not good with our body. Oh, my stomach is this. My, listen, I'm telling you, let me pull this down a little bit. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I started talking about it last week, but I never got it out. All of it out. I was I was talking to him and he was asking me, you know, why do I go to the gym? And I said, I go to the gym because I like to exercise. I like to enjoy myself. I enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy exercising. So when me and, me and Leo can't go, I'm going to go. I can't let that keep me from not going. So sometimes she has an appointment. Sometimes she's tired. You know, she may just can't go. Or sometimes the weather may not permit us to go. And I said, no, I need to keep my gym membership so that on those days when I want to go, I can go. Or if I want to go before me, whatever the case may be, I am able to keep my routine going, right? And so he was like, well, you need, you need to have a, a um, you need to have a, a plan when you go to the gym. You need to go to the gym with a purpose. Let me tell you something. You don't let no, listen. I'm in, I'm in the season of my life where I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying to me. And I will take the meat and I will spit out the bones. I will take the good that you give me, but I will quickly release anything that does not agree with my spirit. If it does not agree with me, if, 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 that, if that's not something that God is speaking to me, I just throw it out. I, I will not listen. I'm, I'm getting to a place more and more where I do not allow people's opinion of what I'm doing or of who I am to affect me. I don't have time for that. Now, that's different from me saying I don't care about what people think. No, I care about what you think, especially depending on how close you are in my circle. However, I am not going to allow you to be the bigger voice in my ear. That's good. That's good. That's good. I'm not going to allow you to be the bigger voice in my ear. I'm going to tell you something. I'm turning 50 in November. November 30th is my birthday. I'm turning 50, right? And so I am super, super excited about the fact that um, I'm turning 50. I'm excited about it. 
But I also, listen, this is, I do this all the time. I reflect and I think about my life. I do this all the time. Sometimes I'll sit and the TV is off or it's on and, and I have it on low just for some sound in the background or I'll tell Alexa to place, you know, play some music. I'm reflecting because I'm thinking about my life. I'm thinking about who I am and where I come from. <laughs> you hear the vibration? Sorry, that was somebody calling. Let me turn the, um, let me turn my focus on. It's supposed to be on, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize, y'all, for the vibrating. Charles said, we hear the vibration. Okay, let me put it down there. Hold on. See, Shari done threw me off. Okay. Yes, it stopped. Somebody was calling. I'm sorry. Sis, don't compare yourself. When we compare ourselves... What what happens is we're telling God that he did not do a good job. What we're telling God is when you made me, whatever you were giving me in my life at this moment, it's not good enough. That's what we're saying to God. Yeah, no, God, you you know, you 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 didn't you you didn't um mm -mm. we cannot I'm trying to stay calm. <laughs> it's coming so strong, and I'm trying to stay calm. I'm trying to teach myself how to just talk. When you compare yourself, what you are saying to God is you messed up. You messed up. When you say, when you say, I want this, and you know, you start looking at your body and 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 you start, you know, downing yourself because of your body, or you look at somebody else, it's okay to admire. It's totally okay for you to admire someone else or something else. Like, for example, y'all know I love Sarah Jakes, y'all know I love Priscilla Shire. Y'all know those are my girls. I remember when I first started doing the morning manna, I would compare myself to them all the time because I would be watching them on a consistent basis. Sophia Ruffin, and um, I would just, I would be watching these different, wonderful, amazing women of God. And instead of me admiring them, the enemy would get in my psyche so much that I would begin to judge myself. I would begin to compare myself to them. Let me tell you something. Everybody got their own call. Everybody has their own walk. Every, listen, God created all of us differently for a reason. I'm going to tell you what the preacher said last night. You may be listening to this today and saying, ah, Put it in your back pocket. As a matter of fact, open up your purse. You know that little side pocket that you have over there? Have the little two little slots right here? Just slide it in there. Because mm. you may not need this right now, but you will need it. Oh, you will need it. Because the enemy, he is always trying to get you to look at someone or something else and say, Oh, man, let me take it a step further. Maybe you look at somebody, maybe they're married, and they posting pictures, they traveling, they're doing this, they just bought a new car, they just bought a new house, or whatever the case may be, and you're looking at them, and this is what you're saying, dog, I'm single, or my marriage is jacked up. You, you, you're thinking about your marriage and you and your spouse may not be getting along. You and your spouse may be in a season where, where there's contention or, or things are not working. Uh, you, you, don't, you, you don't seem, you, you're not close, you're disconnected or whatever the case may be. You may be even at the case where you're ready to walk away, quit, throw in the towel, say, look, I'm ready for a divorce, I'll figure it out. You might 
listen to me, you'll be looking at a, a couple and you'll be thinking in your head, single ladies, we'll look at them and we'll say, God, they look so good together. What a, oh my goodness. You know, they drive a nice car. You know, they live in a nice neighborhood. Like all of that. Especially if you don't live in a nice neighborhood or you feel like where you're living is not where you want to be. You go over to your sister friend's house or to, you know, somebody else's house and you go to seeing their furniture and how they living and you're like, dog, I still got old furniture. I still got my furniture from when I was married. I'm just, I'm just being a little transparent with you. I got a little, you know, my furniture is from when I was married. I, and I, I got divorced in 2012, and I still have the bulk of the furniture that I had when I was married. This is, this is true. This is me talking now. Irma, um, you just took the words right out of my mouth. Baby, you don't know what they are really going through. See, we look at people from the outside, but we don't know what's going on on the inside. Listen, they got, you know, Louis Vuitton bags, Michael Kors, you know, whatever, whatever. Whatever y'all out there, you know, they got this, they got the weave. You know that weave costs because you know you want it and, and that ain't in your budget. And then we try to go out there and get stuff to impress other people. I know you saying, no, I don't. We all have done it at some point or another. This is where, this is where I want us to get to. This is my heart. I want us to stop lying to ourselves and admit where we really are, not, not where we pretend to be. Because, see, in, in the faith world, we will faith it till we make it. That's okay. It's okay to do that. But while you fake it, faking it and faithing it, I'm going to tell you what you better be doing. You better make sure that you are facing the reality of who you are. Who you really are. You know what I had to ask God to do during this pandemic? God, help me to love me. Help me to fall in love with Jacina Marlisa. Help me to love all of me. The, the, the nappy hair I have. The, the stomach that one minute is big, one minute is flat, one minute it want to do this, one minute it want to do something else, one minute, you know, I'm, I'm a little thick, the next minute I'm, you know, I'm slammed up. Help me to love all of me. Right now, I'm not living where I want to live. I'm not living in the neighborhood that I want to live in. I, I, God, right now I'm single and I desire to be married. Like, I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with myself and say, Jacina, you listen, you got to face these things that, that you're not comfortable with, that you don't like about yourself, and you're going to have to deal with it. What can you change and what can you not change? If you, if, listen, God gave me this hair. This is what I was born with, this Zambulu tribal hair, whatever, baby. That's what I got. Now, I can either look at that and, 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 and I can talk negatively about it or I can look at it and I can say, okay, how can I style my hair? What type of clothes fit my body type? Okay, I might not be living where I want to live right now. The, listen, it may not, the outside may not be what I want it to be. I can't control the outside, but I can control the inside. So even though it may not be where I want to be right now, I, this is what I'm learning not to do. Let me tell you something that COVID taught me. COVID taught me to stop waiting. I'm not going to wait until I move to get the fur to do. At first I was saying, I don't want to, you know, get the furniture, didn't have to move the furniture. That's going to cost more. Baby, you got to learn to be like Paul. Mar Marilyn said it. Marilyn said it. You got to learn to be like Paul. You've got to, you got to learn to be content whether you have much or whether you have little. Whether you up or down. This is why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. People take that out of context all the time. That, that is not a, 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 a set apart scripture. It is connected to Paul saying, listen, I have learned to be content with myself. I have learned to be content in the situation I'm in. When we begin to compare what we are saying, what you're really doing is you're saying, I'm not content. Somebody just took your piece. That's what you're doing. When you compare 
yourself to someone else or something else that someone else has, what you're saying is that I am not content. What you're saying is that I don't trust God. What you're saying is, God, you're not good to me. What you're saying is, God, you're favoring somebody else. Listen, I say all the time, God, you're my favorite. I'm, I'm your favorite. I'm your favorite child. I say that all the time. God, I'm your favorite. I have decided I work hard. I'm going to get what I want. I'm not waiting anymore. I, I, I had the mindset, you know how we do, let's work hard and then, you know, save, save for the future. I am a saver and I have some money that I saved, but I'm going to live now. I, 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 Baby, I don't mind complimenting another sister, baby. That is so cute. As a matter of fact, Sharika is on here right now. Sharika, I want that polka dot dress you had. Because see, my room is polka dot. I will compliment someone else in a minute. But when somebody compliments me, sometimes it's, it's hard for me to receive a compliment. They may say... Oh, your hair is pretty, or I like that dress you're wearing, or oh, oh, like somebody said on said, oh my God, that was a good word. And I was beating myself up because everybody else, in my opinion, their word was nice. It was it was a good word, but it was nice. You know, they were lifting the people up, and here I come. You're like Jonah, you're running from the Lord. You better get your life together. <laughs> and I'm like, God. Why do I have to be the one that goes and and God said, because that's how I, I created you. Stop saying I wish I had a soft spoken voice because you, you may be a little bit more boisterous. Your voice may be a little bit louder. It may carry more weight than others. He built you that way for a reason. He created you that way for a reason. Because the people that you need to reach, the people that you need to come. See, everything about you, the way you look, the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, the way you act. There's a group of people that it just, they gravitate to it. That's what they do. They be like, oh. There, there, there are people that 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 they, they 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 see it in you and they just love it. And you over here complaining about how beautiful you are. See, when you begin to ask God to strip, oh glory to God, Jesus, to strip everything about God off of you, mm, to strip it off me. God, if I see it differently from you, do strip it, take it away. When God begins to do that, baby, you can look at yourself butt naked. I'm talking about butt behind naked in the mirror. Baby, you will stand up and you will say, you know what? I love me. I do this all the time. I have this big old tall mirror in my bathroom. I do it all the time. I'm about to go a little deeper. Baby, I love the cellulite in my thigh. I found myself one time trying to find an app that would that would smooth out the cellulite. <laughs> Cause I was posting a picture and I didn't want the cellulite to show. I get out the shower sometime, I turn around, I see cellulite all back here. I see look, uh, you know, my stomach is looking some kind of way. My breasts are small and I'm going. Lord, I've been in this 34 since I was in high school. I mean, can you help me out of the head to babies? I mean. But see, when I want to wear my crop tops and I want, because I'm a crop top prophet, just whatever, you could take it or leave it. I don't really, I, I mean, I'm serious. I, I'm going to live my life. I'm not letting all these crop tops I have go to waste. And then I go to heaven and somebody else wearing them. I'm wearing my crop tops. I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my ripped jeans. I'm wearing them. And y'all might as well wear them too because y'all want to wear them. I don't know what you're waiting on. If my stomach show, it show. Do you see these people walking around here? Baby, they're not, they not ashamed of their body. Baby, they're walking around here. They're letting it all hang out. Them people don't care because those people have gotten comfortable with themselves. What we do is we look at them and be like, now some of them don't need to be wearing this stuff. And some of them may be you. But God bless your soul. I'm not here to do none of that today. I'm telling you, I'm going to be calm today. 
Baby, they walk around and they do their own thing. Guess what you better do? Your own thing. This is what I have said. If the Holy Spirit don't convict me, you can't. Baby, somebody need to get that in their soul. If the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you, Marilyn, baby, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is rest. God like no. Okay. I'm telling you. Stop looking at other people and wanting what they have. This is your mindset. God, I want what you have for me. Why? Because whatever God has for you, let me tell you something. It's going to be better than what they got. Listen, let me just say this real quick and I'm going to go ahead and go. Some of us are looking at what other people have and not realizing what other people have gone through to get it. I know I might have somebody on here that has gone through this. And if you have, God bless you, sis. I, you know, it is what it is. You do your thing. I'm, I'm not having no surgeries where I'm going under and you got to cut my body parts. Of, you know, you, I, I'm not doing that. Because now I got to eat a certain way. I got to live a certain way. Because if I don't, the fat that you just cut off, the booty you just gave me, this big, this big bodacious booty you just gave me, but behind Nagas, whatever you want to call it, that stuff don't even be looking real. Baby, when my husband grabbed me, I want him to grab what the good Lord gave me and what life, what life has presented to him now. This is the problem that a lot of men have. We go and get all these enhancements. Some of y'all, you know, you wearing them eyelashes and I declare and decree they touching your phone and you don't even realize that they way out here. The eyelashes are not supposed to be way out here. It looks funny. You look creepy. Somebody got to tell you. You need to check them eyelashes. You need... I know I might lose some people, but they want to tell you, but they're not. So... I'm the one for the job. This drawing on these things. Y'all can have it all. But if you are comfortable with you, do your thing. But really look at yourself and say, am I content? Because a lot of this stuff, we're not content. I'm telling you, God, this is what God is saying to us. Comparison means that you're not content with who I have created you to be and the things that I have blessed you with. If you have a place to stay, have you ever dro drove by somebody and you see them on the street? And you know they on the street. You know that they're not just these people out here trying to, you know, hustle and get your, get your coins. But these people really are going through it. They're living out here. This is their life. And you got the nerve. We have the nerve to drive home to a place that's, that has AC, a, a refrigerator that has food, a room that has a bed. We, you have all of your needs met. And we have the audacity to complain and murmur to God that I want a bigger house. I want new furniture. I want more clothes. Baby, God told me this morning, this is your problem. Listen, I gave away over 25 four garbage bags of clothes. I'm talking about healthy garbage bags of clothes. This summer, God told me to declutter, clean out, get rid of this stuff, let it go. Okay, I went in and I did that. Let me tell you something. I went in there this morning because I did not get my clothes ready for the week. So I went in there this morning and I'm looking for something to wear and I'm going, I don't have nothing to wear. And he said, really? So clear? Really? This is your problem. You have a plethora of clothes. This is why you can have laundry in the basket that's unclean that needs to be washed. A load of laundry over here that you have washed that you have not folded and put up yet. It's not my thing. Uh, because you have so many clothes and then you come in here and you say, I don't have anything to wear. Find something in that closet and hurry up. <laughs> I was like, ooh, ooh. I was so convicted. God was saying, you have more than you've ever had. 
yet you're saying, I don't have. You may not be driving the car that you want to drive, but you have a car. Your spouse may not be everything that you want your spouse to be, but you have a spouse. You have somebody to do life with. I know it may be a challenge right now, but guess what? I believe when we stop murmuring and complaining, I just believe this with all my heart. When we stop murmuring and complaining and comparing and we begin to thank God for what we have, how far he's bought us. I remember my first apartment was over here on Michigan Street in Orlando. It was $54 a month. I was a college student. I had my baby. My last year of college, my last semester, I had my baby. I had peach furniture. Peach. Yes, I did. I can see it right now in the living room and everything. One bedroom apartment. One bathroom. It was almost like a shotgun apartment. And look at me now. And I have the nerve to say to God, God, why you won't bless me? You blessed her with a new place. You know how you hear people or they posting stuff. That's why some stuff God be saying, lay low. Just lay low. Because everybody that's posting is not posting because they are grateful. A lot of people just showing off. They're just showing off. Everybody that's wearing them pajamas on Christmas, they ain't happy. Put this on. Now let's smile and post. But they're not who they post to be. This is why you cannot govern your life. You, you can't be looking at other people saying, I want what they got. Because you don't know what they're going through. Or what they got to do to stay together. Or what they got to do to keep that house. Or what they got to do to keep that job. Uh, baby, they may be riding in the, in the baddest car, living in the most beautiful neighborhood. But what are they doing to keep it? Are they working like a mule and not living? Are they, listen, some of you, you, you got money. You've been saving and saving and saving. You ain't been nowhere. You won't take yourself on a vacation. You don't know how to live. Because you still are trying to save, save, save. Because when you were younger, you maybe you were poor. Y'all didn't have much. So now you're just saving, saving, saving. You're just going to save, save, save. And God said, live now. Learn to be content right how, where you are with what you learn to be content with that. And then I can bless you with more. God is not about to bless us with more. And we're not content with what we have. If your hair is thinning. Listen, my hair, listen, I, I done messed up and, and I had a quick weave about, what, four years ago. And I was trying to take the quick weave out <clears throat> and the quick weave wasn't coming out. And I was trying to put the oil on, you know, all the stuff we do to try to get the quick weave to loosen up and it wasn't loosening up right. And so I just began to pull and pull and I'm thinking I'm pulling on the cap, but I was pulling my hair. So this side, my edges... They are not there. <laughs> they sort of kind of there. Now, y'all don't laugh. This is just for me to laugh. Anyway, they're not. So I have to get me an edge uh, stick. And I mix my edges. I do the best I can over here. I used to murmur and complain about it. I used to murmur and complain. My hair is thinning. God, why is my head thinning? And God said, stop it. Stop it. Make it work. Make it work. We, 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 we are so big on this, on the outer stuff. What you driving, where you living, where you working, where you, what you got, what you, God said, that's the problem. The, you're you're acting like the world. There's a scripture that says, "Man looketh on the outward appearance. He he look at this stuff, what you got, what you this outward, but God looks at the heart." I'm gonna tell you something. I'm at the place in my relationship with God where I want God to be pleased with my life, with the way that I live. 
I don't profess to be perfect. I, I make mistakes just like you, just like anybody else. I miss the mark just like you. But my heart, my heart desires to please him. And we cannot please the Lord murmuring and complaining. We do not please the Lord when we compare. When we compare, I'm going to tell you what he said again. It's, it's, it's a thief of joy. It's a thief of peace. It's a thief of contentment. It's a thief of your calling. Some of you are not doing what God has called you to do right now. Because you're thinking about, well, I'm not as good as such and such. Or you see somebody else, well, yeah, it's going to be 60,000 people, a million, whatever it is that sells wigs. But they're not going to sell wigs like you do. Because, see, some people sell a wig. And some people sell a wig. They they know they know how to how to connect to the customer and make the customer feel good about themselves. God has given you something to do. That's how I want to end today's live. What are you doing with it? Do you compare your gifts? Do you compare what God has given you to others and you say, Oh, it's just not good enough. Do you look at yourself, your past, and, and you begin to compare? Because sometimes the comparison isn't with somebody else. Comparison is with your own self. Sometimes you can look back and you could say, but you don't know what I did in the past. or You don't even know what I'm doing now. How can God be wanting me to do such and such? Because he is God. Let me tell you something. God sees who you will become. And he loves you for who you are. Now that's a preach. That, 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 that's the good right there, Jay. That's good. Let me say it again. God does not just see you right now. When he sees you right now, he sees the blood. When God sees you, he sees who you are going to become. He sees who you are in him. You understand? He knows you're going to mess up, but he's still going to say, go preach. He's still going to say, go and do what I called you to do. Love you, sis. He's still going to. God has not changed his mind about you because of what you are going through. God has not changed his mind. God has not said, oh, well, because she did such and such, I can't use her. The world says that. See, when we mess up with the world, the world will cut us off. God doesn't cut us off. He still called you. That's still his will. That's still his plan for your life. Do it. Everybody's not going to be doing this. Everybody's not going to be behind the pulpit. Some of you, your, 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 business, your, your ministry, what God has called you to do is in the marketplace. You got to find where God told you to be. And be there and love it and do it to the best of your ability. For those that may be going through some issues, you may be struggling in some areas right now, guess what? Lean on the Holy Spirit. Tap into the Holy Spirit and ask him for help. God, I need you. I'm telling you. God said it on Sunday and he, he keeps saying it. You cannot do anything for God without God. You cannot have a great marriage without God. You cannot have great relationships without God. You cannot prosper without God. I know you think you can, but you're only going to get so far. You need God because only he knows what's ahead. So if God is telling you to go, go. Don't look at what everybody else is doing. If God has told you to be quiet, like there's some things in me that God has said, okay, it's time for you to do. And I'll start, well, God, well, I don't really know doing an a, a online course, God. Can I do that? Yes, Jacina, you could do that. Okay. I, I, and now I'm doubting myself. Well, I know I could do this, but this is what God is saying to us in this season. In this season, I am elevation. When God gets ready to elevate you, this is what he's doing. He has to push you. He's got to stretch you. 
Everybody wants to be elevated. Everybody wants to get a promotion, but nobody wants the more that comes with it. If, if God is getting ready to elevate you, guess what you get ready to do? He's getting ready to stretch you. What are you supposed to be doing that you're not doing? Because you keep comparing yourself and wondering, are you going to be good? Oh, well, well, I don't want to quit my job because if I quit my job and then, you know, God don't come through. If you know that God told you to do it, you better do it. Because you're not going to be happy until you do That's the one thing that I can say. I can truly say. I mentioned it on Monday. I, I, I talked about how I never felt like I was running from my purpose. I was just waiting for the people. So... If God told me to sing or to, you know, dance or whatever, whatever, I would go to a program or event or whatever, and I would do it. When the pandemic came, God said, no, now I want you to go. <laughs> you want me to go where? I want you to turn on the camera. I done seen people doing this all the time, right, on Facebook. Turn on that camera, and I want you to speak what I say speak. Well, the teacher in me, the planner in me, that's the stuff right here. The planner in me, I need to be able to write down what I'm going to say and then check it off. Okay, point one. You know, okay, bullet number two. I want to be able to check. He said, mm-mm, Because, -mm, see, you're in control, not me. That's how he does with Jay Cena. For somebody else, I was looking at Jackie on Sunday. Jackie had her paper. Jackie was looking from her paper. And what the Lord was giving her in her spirit, she was doing them both. And she was hitting off her points. You could see, because she was turning her paper. And I said, well, God, why won't you let me have my paper? You have me writing notes that I never even speak. <laughs> Sir, God, you have me over here. I will prepare Irma, and I will write these things down that I believe God wants me to say. And then I will get to the place I get on here, get on here live. Thinking, okay, God, we was talking about this in the car. Okay, okay, that's the way we go. And then I'll get on here and he'll go in a totally different direction. You know what he's doing? Who else is like that? It's like you be wanting to do things, you know, orderly and have your little stuff together. You know your business. Maybe you run a business. Maybe you're, you know, over a department or, you know, you, you're the leader of something. And you're like, I be wanting to have my stuff all together. And then I try to get my stuff together. And then it's like, God be, mm-mm. I don't say nothing on the paper. I lose the paper. Or my thoughts won't go there. Whatever the case may be. And you're like, God, what you doing? You know what he's saying to you? I want you dependent on me. Gee. Yeah, I want you dependent on me. I want you dependent on me. Yeah. You. She might can you she might need the notes. You don't need notes. You know how to hear me. I just heard God said, I told you what I told you, and you have not moved. And you know it was me. Get to moving. You know it was God talking to you. But yet you over there slow footed. You better get to moving. There are people that are waiting on your gifts. And you out here just wondering. And some of you, you done just, just ran in the opposite direction. This is this is why Jonah got swallowed up in the in the in the well, in the in the in the mouth of the big fish. Because he 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 heard God, but yet, uh-uh, I don't want to do that. So he went a different direction. God said, you might not be swallowed up in a fish, but you but you swallowed up in trials and tribulations and storms. That's what's got you, yeah. You're discontent. <laughs> That's your big fish. <laughs> Come through, Holy Ghost. God said, you're, you're, you're not content. You're living in discontentment. That's your well. You better get yourself together. You better get yourself together. Cause he ain't playing with you. You better do all that God has told you to do. 
So you better get yourself together, baby. I'm telling you right now, you better get yourself together. There are people that are waiting on you. Just like you come on here in the mornings and you and you pull, you you know, God speaks to me to you. He waiting for somebody is waiting for you. Again, it may not be this. You know what your this is. Let's go. Ma'am, sir, let's go. What are you waiting on? Stop comparing yourself, thinking that you are not going to be as good as somebody else. Baby, you're going to be better. Because God has a group of people called to you. Stop complaining about your spouse, your children. Stop that. You see what happened when they began to murmur and complain. We, listen, we got a book of testimonies, a book of examples, a book of do's and don't do's. Let's not be like the Israelites wandering in the desert for 40 years. Why? Because of this right here. You have, you have murmured and complained about the blessing that God has given you. God kept those people. He made sure that those people ate. He made sure that those people never outgrew their clothes. How do you wander for 40 years and you don't outgrow your cow? You don't outgrow your shoe? How? Nobody but God can sustain you. Okay. Y'all got it? I know this ain't no shout message, but sometimes you don't need no shout message. Sometimes you need to sit and you need to think. Think. This is the problem with the body of Christ. We want something to make us feel good. We don't want nothing that's going to make us sit and think, you know. I know somebody clicked on us like, oh yeah, she ain't bringing it this morning. Baby, you could. Yes, sir. Baby, I'm not here to please you. I am not here to entertain. I am here to speak what he tells me to speak. And this morning, he wanted to talk about comparison. And this is what he said. I'm going to talk to him some more about it. I'm going to deal with him some more. The problem is, you know in the Bible it says in the last days they're going to have itching ears. Itching ears don't get you no breakthrough. This is why some people are in the mental state that they are in because all they want is somebody to make them feel good. You just want to feel good, but you don't want to deal with you. And for most of us, we are the problem. We want to blame everybody else, but it really ain't. It really, it's, it's really, it's really not. It's really you. There are some things about you that you need to deal with. And we're going to start it off by saying, okay, I need to stop comparing myself, my life to others. And I need to be grateful for who I am and where God has me, what he has blessed me with. Just start there. Just start thanking God. Because if God wanted you to have something different, he'd have gave it to you. And he might be saying, I got something better for you, but you that, that mouth, that mindset, I, you got to shift your mouth and your mindset in order to be able to receive what I have prepared for you. Amen. All right, child. I'll see y'all on Friday. Friday, we're going to be talking about relationships. I don't know what, but that's what I'm sensing in my spirit. Let me tell you what I had to do this morning. I came in and, and I didn't have my keys and, and I was on the cusp of getting ready to start fussing and stuff. And immediately I heard the Holy Spirit say, uh-uh, shift that. And as soon as I said, God, I left my keys, what am I to do? One of, one of my colleagues pulled up and he said, she going to let you in. And then he started giving me instructions. And then you go to the go to Mr. Hunterhand and get his key and, and let him in your room. And so I got the key and, and I had to get somebody else's key, somebody else's badge to get to Mr. Hunterhand. Listen to me, because this is gonna bless you. Had to get somebody else's badge to get to Mr. Hunterhand to get his key to unlock my room door. 
So I'm looking at the clock and I'm going, the morning manna, the morning manna, I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late. So I got up here and I and I unlocked my door and then I was going to take the key back to Mr. Hunnahan and I was getting ready to post a, a message on Facebook saying I'm running behind. I see y'all at, at 7.40 instead of 7.30. And I was walking out and I saw Senor the Good and I said, hey, are you going downstairs by any chance? Are you going towards the office? And she said, yeah, I'm going to make some calls. Could you please, could you please uh, uh, take this key back to Trevor? Whoever? She said, sure, sure. Let me get my mask. I said, sure, that's fine. God had a ram in the bush for me because I chose to change the way I thought about the situation that I, what, that was happening to me at the time. That's a word for somebody. God says you got to shift your mindset. And instead of you beginning to murmur and complain, instead of you begin to, to oh my goodness, I left my keys. How am I getting in the bed? I mean, you just going through all of this unnecessariness. Yeah, that's, made, that's the word I made up. All of this unnecessariness, instead of you shifting and saying, okay, what can I do? Holy Spirit, I need you to show up right now. What I'm telling you, it's going to happen to you today. It's going to happen to you today. Something's going to happen that you're not going to necessarily be prepared for. And you're going to have an, you're gonna, an opportunity is going to be presented to you to whether you're going to murmur and complain and get all out of source about it. Or if you're going to stop, you're going to shift your mindset, invite the Holy Spirit in, and then go according to his leading and his guiding. Tell me it's going to happen to you today. Watch. I want you to inbox me too. JC and a girl and just tell me. Stay focused. Come on, Sharika. Stay focused. Stop comparing. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining because it steals your joy. It steals your peace. It steals your contentment. Stop it. And, and, and begin to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just end the live telling him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done, thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. I want to say thank you, Calante, Jesus, for all you've done. Calante Gavin sings this song. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. I want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this time with you today. The enemy always tries to come in and say, oh, you didn't do well. But I'm reminded of the preacher that we've been listening to this weekend, Revival. And what he said on last night, he began to, he began to talk about how, you know, it's not in the hooping and the hollering. Sometimes the best messages are when people don't say anything because they're thinking. And we have gotten so conditioned to hooping and hollering and shouting and screaming that when we walk out, that when we leave the place, that when, when the word is, has, 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 has been given and released, that we're not walking in it because we haven't really heard the word. We felt, but we didn't hear. And when we can't hear, we can't go do. So my heart is that that, that the word today was heard and it was heard to the people that needed to hear it because I understand that every word isn't for everybody. Thank you for the maturity that you are teaching me in the spirit. Everybody's not going to receive what was said. That's not, that's, that's, that, that has nothing to do with me. My job is the delivery woman. My job is to deliver. And your job, just like you said in your word, some plant, some water, but it's God that gives the increase. Your job is to do what needs to be done in those that need it. So I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you that, that I am learning to not be afraid of men in their faces, to not be afraid if there are no hearts, no likes, if there, if there are no comments, to not be afraid. I thank you, Father, for those that are listening and those that are receiving 
thank you. Thank you that you're maturing us to where we do not need the applause of men. We're not seeking the applause of men, but we're seeking the will done from the Father. Ooh. At the end of the day, I want you to be pleased with me. So I give you glory and honor for it. Oh, I love me some you. Oh, I love me some you, God. Oh, I love me some you. I love me some you. At the end of the day, I want to hear you say, well done, my good and faithful sir. Well done, daughter. Well done. Woo! Thank you. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that he will make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you and your family. I pray that he will give you favor, that he will open doors so big that it will blow your mind. But I pray that as you begin to walk out the word of God in your life and that you are intentional about your relationship with him, that you practice what has been spoken, that you practice what you have read in the word, that as you make God, as you put him first, as you make him your priority, and you begin to live your life with righteousness and holiness, I pray that you will see him do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. That he absolutely blows your mind. Because you choose to walk with him. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. I'll see y'all Friday. Friday morning at 7.30. We're going to be talking about relationships. You might want to brace yourself. It's going to be good. I'll see y'all then. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Like it. Share it with somebody. Tell them to subscribe. If you haven't shared this on your page, share it. Share with somebody that you know it'll bless. And remember, I love you, but he loves you so much more with your beautiful self. I love you. Have an amazing day. I'll see y'all on Friday.